Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskies. This is the third and the last of the series of the bottles I have over here in Germany. No high gold for me. Um, this is the Derringer. This is the Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Pedro Jimenez Sherry Casks. 46.5%, non-chilled filtered, no color added, beautiful bottle. Um, in America, $80, over here, $75. I have a little bit of issue with the price. I think it's 10 to 15 euros too much. Sorry, that's just me. All right, I did um, the Boxer Grail I liked. 48 euros, just fine. The Cave Hill, 50 some, 55 euros or whatever. Um, two more years, at least in the cask, then I like it as well. Um, I love the distillery, was there last year, did the tour, had a great time, um, did the tasting at the end, bought this bottle, brought it back to Germany, shared it with friends. It was gone fairly quickly because this is an awesome bottle. Um, there's a video online. Um, if you go to the website from here, rabbitholedistillery.com, or if you actually go over to um, YouTube and just type in from Spain to Kentucky Derringer. Should be the first video that pops up. It's from the Rabbit Hole um, YouTube channel. Um, it's been viewed here 400 and, uh, 143,000 times in the last three years. And it tells the story of the barrels. It tells the story of the grapes. It tells the story of the um, Pedro Jimenez, Sherry, Ka Sherry and the casks together. It shows a little bit of video of um, Cave being over there in, um, in Spain visiting the um, Tonatilla, Tonatilla um, the cooperage, as well as the vineyard and them going back over to um, Louisville and them trying things. Now, the thing you must remember is Pedro Jimenez does not have to be um, grown or um, matured in the Jerez Triangle of Sherry. If you have a Fino, yes. If you have Amotiado, yes. If you have a Montanilla, yeah. If you have a Palo Cortado, yeah. If you have a um, Oloroso, yes. Muscatel, I think the grapes don't have to be grown in the dry, in the triangle, but the, whis the, the whiskey, the sherry does have to be matured in the bodega in the triangle, but not Pedro Jimenez. So Pedro Jimenez is actually, the, the Pedro Jimenez here is actually grown and matured by Malaga, which is, I don't know, is it 110, 120 miles away? But it's not part, I've driven from one to the other. <laughs> so I was in Jerez, I was in Malaga. I did not visit any type of bodegas when I was in Spain back then. I, I must do that again. Um, wow, that was, I really am... I, one of the places, it's just like you're going to Scotland and you just visit just castles and meet the people and enjoy the countryside, the food, same thing with Ireland. And like five years later, you discover whiskey from Ireland or whiskey from Scotch and go, why didn't I visit a distillery? I was there. Same thing with me with, um, with Sherry. I did it with Port when I was in Portugal, but I did not do it with Sherry when I was in Spain. Well, that was a oh that was 12 13 years ago now getting old all right what am i going to compare this to i always compare it to something even though it's not perfect i am going to compare it to a thomas s more you're going i did not know that they had a paid lemon as well i did not either i bought the camera the cabernet Sauvignon cask so this is what is this 47.65 percent or 95.3% ABV, or proof for that. So I bought this as I was in um, Kentucky. I brought it over. I never shared the bottle. I still have it. Now, Cabernet Sauvignon is not Pedro Jimenez. It's going to be very, very different. But my question of the day is, and you can already answer it if you want, what is your favorite cask finished bourbon? So it says here, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Pedro Jimenez. It says here, Kentucky Straight a Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Cabernet Sauvignon Casks. Over here, I asked the question, I'm going to get two answers. I'm going to get Angel's Envy, Port Cask Finish, or I'm going to get probably Minor Cast Rye from a Sherry Cask. 
we don't have very many other things that are cast finished yet. In America, yes, it's booming, it's starting. There's all the purists like me that go, oh no. But then I try this and they go, oh yes, I really, really like this. After the tasting at the distillery, I bought a bottle and I brought it back home with me. I did not bring many bottles, but I brought back a, a bottle of Rabbit Hole Derringer, which says a lot. And I waited now until now to actually do my video about this because the bottles have reached Germany. They reached the UK about six months before that. As I said, I'm going to pay 74 euros for this, 75 euros. You're going to pay $80 plus tax probably. So on the nose. Oh, this is good. I mean, um, Cave actually talks about how they picked. The wood is from Ohio. It's American white oak. The um, the cooperage in Spain orders them just, just pallets of, of, of boards of white oak, which is great the right length, the right size, and so on. And it takes almost six months between the order and for the pallet to arrive there in Spain. And then they air dry themselves for 18 months. Now, the video I saw, they weren't outside. Now, when I was in um, Lebanon, Kentucky, for example, International Safe Company, they would put the wood outside and let it be in the elements. There, they had it inside. I don't know if it was just a mistake of the video, but on the online description, it says... Um, uh, dried in the, with the Spanish sun. It's like, well, inside you don't get much sun. All right. And then after it's been dried for 18 months, they make the staves out of it themselves and they make the barrels. And then the barrel making um, is fairly quick. Even they say so at the South Rapido. Rapido. Um, maybe two days is what you need to do the bottom. The next day you can actually have, a, have the stave soaked a little bit, put it underneath that water, under the fire there, so they can start bending the staves and making it into the barrel shape, putting on the ring on top and toasting and charring the inside a little bit. You see them throw water in there as well. And they use the leftover wood, um, the, the cuts off of the wood to actually have the fires to, to make that. That's beautifully demonstrated there. And then the casks are sent down to Malaga, a little bit further south and um, east of um, where the cooperage is. And they make, um, they put their Pedro Jimenez in there, their PX wine. And they leave it in there for two years, which is good. So between then the barrels are sent over to Kentucky, Louisville, and then they're... They are actually then filled with wheated bourbon, which is also nice. So I don't think I've mentioned that, have I? The mash bill. We have a mash bill here of 65% corn. So if we go to the cave hill, 70% corn, all right? 30% of malted wheat, malted barley, and malted honey barley. So here we have 65% corn. We have 25% wheat and 10% malted barley. If I'm correct, 10% malted barley is not enough to have a enzymic um, activity, the enzyme activity, you still need to put in some enzymes to get that fermentation really, really going there, but that's okay. So 65, 25, 10, very, very nice. I like the wheated, uh, Maker's Mark is wheated, um, Weller is wheated, Pappy is wheated, some other Texan whiskeys are wheated and some other things out there are wheated, but I think the wheated whiskey is a canvas that you can paint with your um, finishing with the Pedro Jimenez magnific magnificently. So, um, good. But one sentence I wanted to finish. If I'm the farmer of these Pedro Jimenez grapes, and I know that my grapes will go into a barrel, and that barrel will be used, it will be, the, the grapes will be, that wine will be stored in there for two years, and I'm producing not Pedro Jimenez, but I'm actually producing barrels. And those barrels are then sent to Louisville. I would be sad for my grapes. Yeah, there was no mention whatsoever what happened to those to that Pedro Jimenez afterwards. Now, don't forget, these are fresh virgin oak casks. So there's a heck of a lot of wood imparted, being imparted into that Pedro Jimenez. And there's not that many people in the world that drink Pedro Jimenez anymore. anymore. So is it then thrown away? Is it reused? Is it then made into um, something for airplane food, which George Grant's talked about from Glenn Farkless? What happens to that PX Sherry? Is it sent along? 
um, at least some like 20 liters in the bottle, a barrel, and then they can actually, I saw this done at one distillery. You empty the barrels, you put it in a nice little canister, and this the second time you use the barrel, you pour half of it in, you roll it around, you rejuvenate the barrel. The third time you use the cask, you pour it in, you redo it. I'm not saying rabbit hole will ever do that. I'm just saying I've seen that being done. All right, so um, that rejuvenation process of sherry casks. Made me angry the first time I saw it. All right, good. Let's try these. Love the aroma, ah, the berries, the the sherry, the the caramel, the oak, the the dates, the plums. Very, very, very nice. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I am not the biggest fan of wheated whiskeys. Weller, eh. No, normal Maker's Mark, eh. Maker's 46, yeah. Those extra save finishes in there really does it. Here, those that extra PX sherry. Mmm. That is really, really nice. I like. This is a B- minus whiskey for me. Now, the value for money is a C-. minus. Now, how can it be a B- minus and a C- minus for value for money? I'm not willing to pay 80 euros for this bottle of no age statement. Okay, it's four years old. Um, Kentucky straight bourbon finished in Pedro Jimenez. I'd be willing to pay 60, 55, yeah, maybe 60, but $80. Ah, would I do it again? No. Now, two factors are involved in that. Number one, the world of bourbon prices is crazy. And number two, I still live, I have the feeling in the year 19, so 2019, with my price perception. It's like, back there in 2019, I paid so-and-so, grumpy old man. And that's my problem here with whiskey prices at the moment. Yeah, um, and so, yeah, yeah, I love the whiskey. I recommend it a lot if you can find it now, and I can highly, highly, highly um, uh, suggest you at least try a dram someplace, at Whiskey Fair, at a bar, at someone's home. If you're in Germany, you can ask me for a sample. I can send it to you after we have a little bit of PayPal transactions, and so on and so on. This is really good. Oh, by the way, my bottle's empty. <laughs> I had it set, and I did it in my WhatsApp um, bottle share group, gone. I mean within minutes it was a long time since everything was boop. it's like jason i'm sorry it's all gone well do another one. no all right so i buy a bottle i do a bottle share i do the video i share the bottle and then the rest of it also and then i get to have my video and the bottle's gone and i have a little bit of work and everyone's happy and people can watch my video and try it home as well with the same products i've had and so that's very very good so over here the thomas um S more. Now, before I taste this, the last question is, what is your favorite cask finished bourbon? So, Kentucky straight bourbon, Texas straight bourbon, I don't care, Virginia straight bourbon, finished in. So, that's the category since um, Angel's Envy somehow, somehow got approved back then. What is your favorite um, cask matured whiskey finished in? Now, the Cabernet Sauvignon is well done. Mm. The red wine, the dryness, the, the fruitiness really comes through. Very nicely balanced as well. But if I were to drink a good Cabernet Sauvignon or a good Pedro Jimenez, my statement, imagine this is Call Me Chris. Shout out to her. I like her videos. I would actually now stop the screen and have the statement. Pedro Jimenez makes everything better. Um, <laughs> that's what I would do here. That's what it is. I think Pedro Jimenez in any whiskey I've had so far makes everything better. So if I had a cask that I didn't know what to do with because it was just crappy, I would put it in a Pedro Jimenez cask and say, ta-da, looky here. I hope you don't taste that nastiness, but you just get the Payex goodness. And that's what um, I think is Payex can do anything well. Change it into a good um direction not saying this was bad whiskey i'm just saying that the um, wheated 
bourbon here is the excellent canvas for them to paint with the Pedro Jimenez. And here they painted just the right amount, maybe a little bit more than I would have, but I like. And this is the same thing. This is very, very well done, but yet, if I were to choose the two, Pedro Jimenez is the one I would choose. Which one have you chosen? Which one have you tried? Which one have you bought? Which ones have you rebought? What are the finished bourbons out there that you've gone yummy? I want more. Thank you very much for watching the series. Thank you very much. If you haven't watched the other two, go back, find the Cave Hill, find the um, Boxer Grail. This is definitely my favorite. The um, Boxer Grail, the Rye is my second favorite. And the Cave Hill needs a little bit of time. It's going to be good, good, but not yet there. All, all the best, Whiskey Jason here. Don't forget to like, share, and if you haven't, subscribe. Bye-bye.